Hi, I'm Rosanna, and I'm going to be giving a presentation on multi-part form uploading to AWS S3. What is AWS, you ask? It's Amazon Web Services. What is Amazon Web Services, you ask? We're going to go over that right now. So Amazon Web Services, um, the way that they got so popular is because companies um, were, who were experiencing surge traffic would traditionally end up buying loads of power to sustain its business during peak times. And on off-peak times, computing power lays unused but still costing the firm money. So with AWS, companies pay for what they use. There's no upfront cost to build a storage system and no need to estimate usage. AWS customers use what they need and their costs are scaled automatically and accordingly. So Amazon Web Services offers more than 70 cloud computing services that make up an on-demand computing platform. It provides servers, storage, networking, remote computing, email, mobile development, and security. Um, fun fact, a third of, the internet, of internet users access Amazon Web Services at least once per day because lots of big applications use AWS, like Netflix, Dropbox, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, so here are some examples of some of the services that they offer. So computing, uh, database networking, administration and security, deployment and management, analytics, application services, and mobile services. And the one that we're going to be looking at specifically today is S3. So what is S3? Um, it is Amazon Simple Storage Service. Um, it's the most central and best known Amazon web service. It's secure, durable, highly scalable, scalable cloud storage and um, with a simple web service interface to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere on the web. Example use cases are backup and recovery, big data analytics, cloud applications, and content distribution. And today we're going to be looking at content distribution. So um, we're going to be uploading photos. Um, the way I'm doing it today, just to get you like introduced to S3, is kind of like not necessarily the best way to do this, but like just a way to show you how to upload it to your app server and then upload it to S3 from there. So here's like a diagram of what, it's look, what it looks like right now. It's like the browser going to your, uh, your app server and then going to S3. So um, let me show you a quick fun thing. Huh. Okay, so you can choose a file. You can upload it. And down here, here's the picture, and down here is actually the URL too. You can see s3.amazonaws.com. So it's actually being stored in your S3. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to kind of walk through the code to show you how I did this. So I first had it saved to an uploads folder in my app server. Um, so here is the index.html. As you can see, um, there is a file model directive attribute uh, that takes user.file. And the reason is this, I'm using this is because you cannot bind a file using ng model. So you have to make a custom directive to link our file to our scope in our controller. Um, so here is our directive. Um, um, we write the directive to gain access to the file object in our controller. File model is an attribute on a file input element, and its value is the name of the variable in our controller scope, and that binds to the file object. In the link function over here, um, we listen for changes to the content of the input element and change the value of the variable in the scope accordingly. This is done using the dollar sign parse that we have injected um, service to get the value in our scope. And now we have access to the file in our view controller. The next part is this service, the multi-part form service. Um, and in order to upload the file to the server with the multi-part data request, we pass the file object and the URL to a service and override some of Angular's default behavior. Um, upload URL is where we're uploading to. Um, FD, that equals new form data. It's a bunch of key value pairs. Um, so we can take the data object and convert it into form data with this. Um, and using the for in loop, we want to use FD to append the key and value of the key by taking every element of user and putting it into the form as a key and taking the value and putting it in as the value for that key. Um, something to note, the form data object is not supported by IE9 and earlier. Um, Angular is defaulted to serialize our form data object, so we want to overwrite it with the identity function to leave the data intact. Um, then we return the response data so that we can have access to it in our controller. Um, so here's our controller. Uh, we inject scope and the multi-part form that we've created. 
um, we instantiate a user and we have an upload file function that is um, invoked when you click upload. And here um, we um, send to our upload URL, which in this case is my uploads folder. Um, we put the image URL on our scope um, right there. So here's what it looks like uh, in our post route. Um, so here I'm using um, the S3 library and also Molter library. Um, so here um, we upload the single file and that's from Molter. Um, and we set up S3 params and we include the name of the bucket. Right now the name of the bucket is upload demo images. Um, we use upload.on to show errors and progress and when it's done uploading. And then once that's done, we use FS unlink sync um, uh, t to delete the file that was uploaded to the uploads folder after sending it to S3. And then we send a response back with success and the image URL that we can use here in our controller so we can get it on the scope so that we can ultimately show it down here in our index or our home page. Um, so here are some of the resources that I used. Very helpful. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to reiterate that um, I guess this isn't the best way because you're transferring twice from the browser to your app server and then a second time from the app server to the destination. So because of this, your upload progress, progress is technically incorrect because your browser is only going to know about the progress from your computer to the app server and not about the progress from the app server to S3. Um, you also have to manage failed transfers. So a way to, to do it to get it to send directly from um, Angular to S3, you have to use a signed request. Um, but it's tricky because you don't want to expose your S3 credentials on the front end, um, like your secret key and all that stuff. So you need to use a signed URL, and that will give you access to S3 directly. So um, just to end, let's upload another file. So here's, oh, this one's nice. And then some puppet to of it. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. That's it. <laughs>